Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, I'm going to go through a couple of things today, a few things. Let's start off, I don't know, it's about 10 to 3, February 25th, Tuesday, 29 degrees. My batteries, according to this, my battery is charged and you can see it back there. And, um... That one says 30, so it's probably like minus one, minus two centigrade. So I've talked about buying a spare rear end. Got here today, Federal, Federal Express. So here it is. This has to be one of the more unique um, jobs of uh, wrapping. Look at this. Oh, I mean, cute, huh? So, I'm going to give it a quick unwrap. Let's see what we got here. The one-handed man unwrapping things. What could go wrong? Um, one of the things I can tell instantly, those type of end plates are typically... Uh, from um, older version rear ends, the ones with the uh, extra metal plate on it. So that's the first thing I'm noticing. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Secondly, not that I'm a CSI or anything, but this looks like crayon on the box. So he uh, he might have stole his kid's fort. Poor kid. Or he could have got the box out of the garbage, you know. Maybe he lives in an apartment complex and he got it out of the garbage. Maybe he doesn't even have kids or anything. So this is second one is loose so I am missing one of the bolts that go through not quite sure why he included these things in the center Tell you what let me put you down for one second while I do this Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. First of all, the bearings any good? And they do seem to be good. Sprocket has a lot, a lot, a lot of wear on it. I mean, wow, Sprocket's got a lot of wear. But the bearings feel good, feel tight. Um, now I'm looking at the bolt holes. That one's good. That one's good. I don't know if you guys can see it, that upper one right toward the edge of the screen. Actually now it's about in the center of the screen. That one's good. And that one down there looks good. That's nice. Um, I can't move the brakes but if you look at the uh, brake levers there they were cut off so actually you know what? Even the brake feels pretty good. Chain guard looks good, though I normally don't keep these. But given that I have to remove that sprocket, maybe I will go through the trouble of saving it. I don't know. Yeah, you could see this was some kid's fort or something. There ain't little robots or whatever drawn on it. So, 
anyway, you can see that guy too. So this is a $75 delivered to the house rear end, right? Um, if these bolt holds were screwed up, I would just be screwed. That means I bought junk. Um, but they don't appear to be. I mean, it came with the hubs, right? So I got two hubs, rear end, brakes feel good. It does have some miles on it though, because that, that sprocket there, oh God, has spent. I can always swap it with that sprocket because that one looks good yet, which will probably be what I'll do. So that was the first thing, the rear end. Secondly, when I buffed out that guy, when I cleaned it up, I used sandpaper in my hand, and uh, it was kind of a lot of work. Um, got some of these sanding blocks, and check this out. This is how easy it is. So, as you can see in no time at all, I, I could have this fender cleaned up. And, I mean, you can see almost, it's almost, almost wiping away. So, um, these blocks are going to make life so much easier. Uh, the, they are known as mediums manufactured in Korea and whoever designed them is on Long Island right Deer Park New York is Long Island so anyway that'll make the second fender and this front fender go so much quicker I and mean, if you just look at this you can see it's like bubbled right here. look how easy that came off And that's left-handed. So there you go. So uh, these things are nice. These they're called sanding sponges. They sell them a lot of places. They do have them at Harbor Freight, so uh, they make life a tad easier. I had medium floating around, so that's what I ended up. That's what I'm using here. I'm guessing that. Um, fine would be better. I'd end up with less scratches. You can see I am scratching it a bit. I think I can buff most of those scratches out with steel wool. If not, what I'll do is I'll wet sand it with 600 and then go back to the steel wool. I kind of like the way, I don't know, maybe you can see it better with the way the light is today. The way that kind of um, kind of has in the in the red plastic, you can kind of see some of the patina or discoloration whatever you want to call it but I think that kind of looks cool so my tent my lean right now is to kind of just get them cleaned up um, like 95% of the way kind of leave some of the 5% uh, some of that that discolored look in there that classic look let's call it so anyway that's this guy, and lastly, coping. Um, many of you who watch my channel, I've only been ranting and raving about this for the last two weeks. I'm facing uh, a layoff. So I've pulled all my connections, and it turns out I'm on the layoff list, and it's supposed to happen eminently, like any minute. And today was the rumored day for the uh, layoff to actually happen. So, I call into work and check with some buddies, and there's no layoff. No layoff today. So, I, uh, you know, then start asking what's going on. Well, there's rumors that we might be sold, and they're supposed to announce it Friday. And then the local paper had that, you know, they're going to keep, you know, 3,000 jobs in the valley, which is 
interesting because there's 7,000 of us currently. So that means, y you know, 4,000 have to go. It's just very, very strange. If I were laid off tomorrow, which I anticipate being, I'm okay with that because I know what to do next. Depending on the severance plan, if they say, well, you're on call for 90 days, I'll wait my 90 days, I'll make YouTube videos, and when the 90 days is over, they have hand me my severance check, whatever that is, and I go on with my life. I know how to handle that. If I'm being sold, and I got to jump over the side with whatever pension I have because I don't want the new company to destroy my pension or take it away or whatever they could do with it. You know, I wish I knew that so that I, I could make the second set of arrangements. I mean, if I'm, and I'm going to try not to say that over and over again, but if I'm out, I know how to go look for a job. If I'm in, I know how to work my job. This part way in, part way out, if you are out, we don't know what the severance is going to be. That is driving me a little bit, a little bit batty. I'm having a tough time planning. I normally, I'm one of those people who normally goes through life with a plan. And I don't mind changing my plan, tweaking my plan or anything. But this is kind of a major thing, you, you know, whether or not. You have a job. That's kind of a major thing. And it's kind of one of those things you really got to plan around and make, you know, finan financial arrangements, you know, and everything else. So I am a little bit, uh, I am a little bit confused. Let's use the word confused. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do with all of this. Normally, people cope in different ways. One of my ways of coping is I like to know what's going on, even ahead of time, you know, kind of run the rumor mill, and there goes another one of those. Um, and from that knowledge, one kind of feels like you have a little bit of control over your life. But... Um, Going through the rumor mill, getting all this information, and then having it come back untrue brings you back to the point where you don't feel like you have any control over your life, where you, you feel like you're kind of being tossed about in the winds a tad. So I'm, uh, I'm confused by all of this. It's not, it's not the way I normally run my life. I guess I could get out of it by just saying tomorrow, going in and saying, hey, you know what, screw you guys, I'm retiring. But retiring doesn't come with a severance plan. And the severance plan is kind of necessary to do some of the work the house needs. I'm ripe for a furnace, um, the pellet stove, the uh, blower motor, both blowers actually are squealing. So it's time to replace the uh, pellet stove. I got stuff I really got to do in the house and my retirement won't quite carry me to do all those repairs with a lot, without a little cash first. I guess what I'm uh, saying or what I'm scratching my head about is I just I just don't know what my future is with this company. And because I don't know what my future is with this company, one feels a tad insecure or confused or out of control. I guess the word I'm going to use is out of control. I feel like I don't have control of, uh, of my future like I normally do. Like I can't make the plans I normally make. Anyway, guys, thanks for... Uh, Listen to me ramble, rant. Remember to keep your tires down, your handlebars up. Hopefully things are going well for those of us, because I still have a job. I hope things are going well for those of us with jobs. For those without jobs, hopefully you're retired or you got some other gig figured out. 
to pay the bills and, and you're not in constant worry about that kind of stuff because that doesn't make not working any fun if you're not working but you're sweating about you know feeding yourself and keeping the car and keeping the house or keeping your apartment and keeping your kids and keeping all that stuff it's not much fun to do without a job the stress of not having a job I think is worse than the stress of going to a job every day and putting up with the bull you have to put up with at any job okay remember keep your tires down your handlebars up your tracks down your feet down to keep your head and your uh, steering wheel up also remember to live love and have a great time we'll catch you on the next episode of the horde and folks thanks for listening to my ranting musings whatever you want to call them <laughs> thanks for the subscriptions thanks for the uh comments thanks for watching thanks to provost motorsports for hanging on to that uh three-wheeler for me i really appreciate that take care folks